Do you want to destroy all vehicles in game quickly and easily? If yes, then you have this collection of every best German weapon available at low tiers installed on Italian plane IAR-81C. In this video I will tell about each weapon separately, why I call them best German weapons, and then some insights about the plane that might not be so easy to notice at first glance. This plane can carry bombs, probably the most ordinary thing this vehicle has, rockets, one of the most powerful in the game, and finally primary armament of two low caliber machine guns and two 20mm cannons. What's most important is that it uses the same German ammunition which is known for its high explosive damage, as projectiles have about twice more explosives than similar ammunition of any other nation. The set of all these weapons allows this plane to be very effective against any, even the heaviest ground target, and you got to keep some maneuverability of a fighter and deal with planes using legendary German shells. Rockets are the same as used by Germans and are different from rockets of other nations by a very important feature. For usual rockets, you need a good accuracy to damage tanks. That involves approaching enemies as close as possible, at the same time trying to attack from above to hit the roof plates where protection is weakest and at the same time compensate the deviation caused by gravity, plus manage your speed to have enough time to turn away after the attack if you don't want to hit the ground, and in every step you can make a mistake. While these German rockets have something that forgives mistakes. It is 10 kilograms of TNT. When you have this amount of explosives, all you need is to hit a tank, anywhere, and the detonation of warhead will do the rest. When you play this plane with high tier tanks, it might be a little more difficult against heavy tanks, since rockets won't be able to penetrate the side armor, so you will have to pay attention to all these accuracy things but when hitting medium or light tanks, they will be destroyed easily. And of course, at its battle rating at 2.7, any vehicle will be an easy target. Together with rockets, you can take one 250 kg bomb. Half of the bomb's weight are explosives. Pretty much ordinary weapon available to a lot of planes. Not too powerful to set a huge bomb fuse activation delay, but powerful enough to set it to one second just in case. It acts like any other bomb in a game. The damage depends on the proximity and armor of a tank. The more armored your target, the closer bomb should drop. While light vehicles can be damaged by distant explosions. Just like rockets, when played on its own battle rating, they will be more effective and if you keep using the plane at higher tiers, effectiveness will depend on your target's armor. But because bomb is located at the center of a plane, it's easier to accurately drop it, so with some effort you can use it even at high tiers. The one thing you should be aware of is that it takes some time from the moment you press the button before the bomb is actually released. It's because the mechanism takes some time to drop it. So keep leading your target for one additional second before bomb disconnects from your plane, before doing any maneuvers. The primary weapon are machine guns. A pair of small caliber MGs are not worth a lot of attention, as all such projectiles are quite the same for all nations. The only thing worth mentioning is the amount of ammunition. 1400 bullets for two machine guns, that's around 40 seconds of firing. I've never run out of this ammunition in any of my battles with this plane. Two 20mm machine guns are more interesting. They use ammunition that translates as mine shell. Unlike regular shells, which were cast and the explosives were drilled inside it, these German projectiles were made of high quality steel with very thin walls and that allowed to put more explosives inside the projectile of the same size. That results in less fragments, but bigger explosion. In total, this plane has 350 shells for both guns. 
you will run out of ammunition sometimes, but it's still a huge amount that allows you to shoot without thinking about conserving your ammo. But you won't need to use that much of ammunition against aircraft. Because explosion is exactly that thing that is most effective against planes. A short burst is usually enough to destroy a fighter, and even if bigger planes will need more shells, the fight will still be very short. Ability to destroy planes quickly is very useful when attacking planes with tail gunners, as it allows you to minimize the time you spend attacking that gives less chances for enemy gunners to do any damage to you. But it's even more important against fighters, especially for this plane. The IAR-81C is not very maneuverable and will lose any turn fight with a single engine fighter. Because of that, there are only few chances to kill fighters. It's when you have the element of surprise, so you can destroy him as fast as possible before he started evading, or when you have an energy advantage and you can use it to do few sharper turns. Because the energy is lost quickly, there is only a short window when you can have an opponent in your sights. And if your shells were not doing so much damage, anyone who survived your hits would eventually outmaneuver you. A high damage also reduces these situations when you are outnumbered. Because you can destroy them faster, then reinforcements can arrive and help them. Very important thing that was killing me all the time is that in addition to plane's poor maneuverability, it becomes almost uncontrollable when you reach speeds of 500 km per hour or more. At around the same speed, your combat flaps will be ripped off if they are extended. That is extremely annoying when attacking ground targets and forces you to pay more attention at speed when going into dive. So you either need to decrease speed in advance before attacking or start to pull up early further away from target and possibly sacrificing the accuracy of bombs or rockets. Another thing about diving is that the aircraft very poorly responds when you push the nose down. So whenever you start diving you should allocate more time for a maneuver or just roll the plane to avoid pushing nose down altogether. But since it doesn't affect you in responsible moments, such as in a turn fight with another plane or when coming out of dive, it's not a big issue. Sometimes just after respawning you will see enemy fighting coming right in front. In these situations it's probably best to go head on, because your plane is not the best at maneuvering, especially when you carry secondary armament, but you have enough firepower to win such confrontation. Plus fuel tanks are protected by the engine and pilot that sits behind both of them additionally has 75mm bulletproof glass in front of him. That's one of the thickest glasses of all the aircraft in the game. So whenever you go head on, you can be quite sure that a pilot won't be killed. Of course, plane itself is likely to suffer big damages. Usually engine will be destroyed, but at least the sky is clear and you can still try to use the rockets and drop bombs rather than postponing the inevitable end if you engage in a turn fight you cannot win. When there is nothing to attack in air and you are out of secondary armament and the battle is close to an end so there is no point to go to airfield, you can attack engines. That's not very effective because Stealth Belt has mostly high explosive shells and for that one armor piercing bullet to penetrate you must attack at almost 90 degrees angle, it's nowhere near good as Browning's in USA 3. But you should not forget that you can be more useful than just marking enemies for your allies. On the other hand, open top vehicles are especially easy for this plane as the shells with a lot of explosives do not need to hit every crew member directly. I needed universal aircraft when started to research Italian air forces. It had to be a fighter so I'm able to defend the airspace and at the same time I wanted to be more useful than just marking enemy vehicles when there is no aircraft to attack. So having tools to deal with armored ground targets and preferably as many targets as possible was one of the main requirements. 
and everything Italian tech triathlotiers can offer at the moment are fighters with weak bombs. And usually they are dropped all at once, so maximum you can count on is one target per attack and then only hope to do more kills if you can find open top vehicles. So my choice fell on this premium plane as it offers good balance between attacking air and ground targets. So I bought this plane during 50% discount and this purchase served me well. Players who don't spend money unfortunately have less variety, as there are just fighters that usually carry weak bombs or bombers that won't be so useful against enemy fighters. Hopefully that will change in the future as Gaijin adds more vehicles, but for now Italian tree just like France have the smallest amount of vehicles because these are the most recent nations. At the moment in Italian plane tree only jets can use rockets and because of that have potential to do more kills. But endgame planes might be difficult to reach if you only play ground vehicles. You can also keep an eye on Warbond Shop premium vehicles rotation every month, as low tier premium vehicles can be earned by grinding Warbonds and doing special tasks as well. For someone who buys Golden Eagles, it is good value for money if you need a universal plane to use in ground battles.